is there um, is there a way for us to make our money work harder? Ah, so so, so equanimity says, oh yes, yes, you know, we can actually make our money work harder if we compound within the year. And so in this part right here, equanimity tries to explain this to uh, Simplicio. He says, look, if you compound semi-annually at 2.5%, so you do it twice in a year, uh, you'll make even more. And you can make even more if you do it monthly. Uh, the more that you compound, basically, the more you make. And so he does this diagram here. Malfeasance steps in because it's been a while since Malfeasance has had a part. And he says, look, okay, well, if we uh, compound this loan uh, twice a year, so every six months, here's what will happen. Right, so and I and I do it at two and a half percent instead of five percent. So I do two and a half every uh, six months. And in the end, it'll be uh, uh, nearly equivalent to five percent over the the whole year. And so I take a thousand dollars, and uh, if I do two and a half percent of a thousand, I get twenty five. So after six months, this is how much I have. And so the thousands basically I hit it at two and a half percent and gave me twenty five. And then I hit it again at the end of the year, and the thousand gives me another twenty five. But I can also hit the twenty five, and that's going to give me 63 cents, right? That's found, look, just like taking 25 times 2.5%, so times 0 0.025, and that's where this, you know, 0.623, so 63 cents comes from. And so you actually make a little bit more than you did before. Before, you made exactly this, $1,050. Now, I made 63 cents extra, so it worked a little bit harder than it did before. And so equanimity is low. <clears throat> it says, yeah, exactly, malfeasance. And here's a formula for this. So this is where our compound interest formula comes from. If we compound n times a year, uh, we get this formula. And really just a slight modification of the formula we found uh, before. We're just dividing by n here and multiplying t by n. And we can use this to fill in the uh, table below. So let's do that. <clears throat> so to fill this table in, let's clear these out. You know, after uh, one year, right, we're compounding yearly. Uh, all we need to do is, you know, plug in these numbers. So we have the present value, which is a thousand. Left parenthesis, and then we have uh, one plus zero point zero five. If we're compounding once a year, it's just divided by one, and then raised to left parenthesis one times the number of years, which is also just one. Right, so if you look here, t is always just one because we're just looking to see how the money's growing the, as we compound more and more throughout the year. And so you hit enter, and so our first answer is exactly what we'd expect it to be, one thousand and fifty dollars. Now, if we compound twice, so instead of n being one, n will be equal to two. Let's see what we get. So we now make those ones two, and now we get one thousand. And fifty dollars and sixty-three cents. So we make an extra sixty-three cents if we do it uh, semi-annually, twice a year, and then we could do it monthly. So up here, instead of a two, we'll put a, a twelve. So one, and then second insert two. So there's a twelve, and then over here where there was a two, I'll also put a twelve. So second insert, I put a 1 there, so there's a 12. Hit enter, and this is my answer if I compound it monthly. So $1,051.16. So if I compound monthly, I make a dollar uh, sixteen more than I would if I compounded it just uh, yearly. And finally, I can do it daily, which is 365 times a year. So second enter. And wherever I see this 12, I'm going to put 365. So let's go back here. So 3, 6, and I need to insert a 5. And then where I see this 12, I'll put 3, 6, and I'll insert a 5. Hit enter. And out pops $1,051.27. Uh, Alright, so on the next page. Simplicio says, "Oh, amazing, amazing! You know, um, you know. I the more I compound interest, the more I get malfeasance. It's sort of like, and so this is sort of an analogy we're going to use to try to understand what's going on here. So, throwing logs under fire. The more logs I throw on the fire, which means the more times I compound, the hotter the fire becomes. The more money I make, I can make a fortune off of malfeasance. I could just keep on compounding and get more and more money from him. And equanimity says, not quite. 
He says, just like there's a limit to how hot a fire can get, there's also a limit to the amount of money you can squeeze out of poor malfeasance. And so Simplicio, of course, wants to know this limit, and that's what we're going to figure out in this uh, final act. All right, so in Act 3, we're going to discover the continuous interest formula. All right, so uh, we pick up with Simplicio to try and understand what's the most amount of money I can get from malfeasance if I continuously compound uh, the interest. And so equanimity says, well, here, let me try to explain to you the idea that there's actually a limit to how much you can make. And so what he does, he says, think of this uh, rope. If I have a rope and I cut it in half, right, then I have half the rope. And if I continue in this process, keep cutting the rope that I have left in half, I'll have then a fourth of a foot. Right? I cut then the other fourth and a half, so I have an eighth of a foot, and so on. What you can do is you can take these lengths and start putting them together. So I could have you know, just half the foot right here. Right? Of course, that's going to be less than or equal to one foot. But then I could take, instead of just half the foot, I could take half the foot of rope and uh, one fourth foot of the rope, and then I'll have put those together and I'll have more, but it'll still be less than or equal to one. And I can continue, continue on doing this. Right? I could take then one half, one fourth, and one eighth. It'll still be less than or equal to one foot. And then down here it says one half, one fourth, one eighth, and then a half of that, so it'd be one sixteenth. All right, so a half of an eighth is a sixteenth, and keep going a half of a sixteenth is a one over thirty-two, and so on. So you can keep adding these, you know, different lengths of rope up together, but they'll always be less than or equal to one foot. All right, so it says here you keep getting bigger uh, on the left-hand side, but it's always less than or equal to one foot on the right-hand side, and this is exactly what happens when we compound interest more frequently. Our return gets larger the more we compound, but we'll never exceed a certain amount. Just like the length of the pieces of rope cannot ever exceed one foot. Okay, so Simplicio says, I understand that basically a little bit better. Um, but what's the amount, the, the, is there a formula for it? And Equinemi says, yeah, there is a formula for it. You can get it by letting n get bigger and bigger in the compound interest formula. So, you know, let n be like a thousand or a million. And so he says, here, fill out this table so you can try to figure it out. So the idea is now we're going to let n be like daily. We did that before, and we could do it hourly and then minutely. So the way this works is we'll say, okay, well, we did it actually already hourly. Right? So right here, this entry right here, this was for, oh, sorry, daily I meant. Right? This is for daily. And so I can copy this answer down. This was $1,051.27. I can even do it hourly. To figure out hourly, I know there's 365 days, and I'll multiply by then 24 to get the number of hours in a year. And so then I can hit second, enter, second, enter, and wherever I see 365, I'm going to put in this 8,760. So 8,760, 8,760. 60, so second insert, put a zero. And again, for 365, I'll put in 8,760. I'll have to insert the zero. And hit enter. And again, notice I get out basically the same answer. Uh, there's a little dif difference here. You know, you see there's a six there, there's a seven there. But basically, when I round, I get the exact same answer. So $1,051.27. Right, all the change takes place over here in the decimal places that are basically uh, from 3, 4, 5, and 6 uh, decimal place. I can do it minutely. So to figure that out, I had 8,760 uh, hours in a year. And now there's 60 minutes in an hour, so times 60. And so there's the number of minutes in a year. Uh, of course, it's going to be the same value as this over here, but we can try it. So second enters, pull up the last entry. And so wherever I see this 8,760, I'm going to put 525,000 and then 600. So I need to insert two zeros. So that's the number of minutes in a year. And so here, 5, 2, 5, 6, and insert two zeros. And I get my answer again. See, $1,051.27. Right, the change is occurring here in these other dec decimal places. And this is really the reason that most things are uh, compounded daily or things are done daily because once they're done daily, most of the changes occur in decimal places that are past the, the second decimal place. 
Okay, let's finish this up. So this means that Simplicio, that the most that Simplicio can get back from malfeasance is basically $1,051.27 uh, after a year. All right, and so uh, Equinity says this is correct, and mathematicians have a fancy way of letting n get bigger and bigger. So the future value is equal to, this is said the limit, as n goes to infinity, the present value times 1 plus i over n to the nt, which turns out to equal pv times e the it. And this is what's called the continuous interest formula. The t and i should be reversed there, right? That should be a t and then go to i. Um, but that's where the continuous interest formula comes. It comes from the compound interest formula, uh, letting n get bigger and bigger, and out pops that continuous interest formula. And so then Simplicio says, so you're saying that as n gets bigger and bigger, goes to infinity, the compound interest formula somehow changes into the continuous interest formula. Equanimity says exactly. Well, Simplicio is somewhat taken back by this, but he says, I kind of get the idea, okay? The more I compound interest, the more I make. Uh, but there's also a limit to how much I can make, and this limit is given to me by the continuous interest formula. Tell you what. All right, that should be a T and then an I. All right, so um, then we want to fill this table out below because uh, Malfeasance says, you know, well, do I get the loan or what? And then Simplicius says, sure, but you have to pay me back at a continuous interest rate of 5% because this is uh, the way that he's going to get the most uh, amount of money back. And so we have this continuous uh, interest rate formula that FV is equal to PV e to the IT. And we simply just plug this in um, to figure out our answers. All right, so over here, we take 1,000. And then we have second e to the, and then we have 0 0.05, of course, times 1 for one year. That's the first entry. And we get out $1,051.27, which could have been found from the above table. And then we do it for two years, so just hit second enter, and where you see that 1, that's for one year, we'll make it two years. And so after two years, I'll have to pay back $1,105.17. And so on, you know, for three years, the two becomes a three. And so we get $1,161.83. And then we can check to see if we're doing this right. If we plug in four instead of three, so for four years, and we should get out $1,221.40. And then the last one, for five years, we'll put a five, and we get $1,284 and three cents. And so then Malfeasance, you know, upset because he's, gonna, he's going to have to pay more but than uh, originally uh, he wanted to. He says, darn you equanimity and your meddling interest, right? So that's my Scooby-Doo reference. The end.